Thank you. Welcome everybody to the council meeting of today's state. Could you stand please while we read the council chair and Councillor Lambert. Thank you. Almighty God, as members of the Rangitake District Council, we give thanks for all the good things of our district and the advantages we enjoy. We pray that you will give us wisdom and guidance as we conduct the affairs of this meeting. We pray for all the communities and the district we represent. Help us to be fair and honest in our discussions and help us to work together in unity for the welfare of all your people. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, and welcome and a special welcome to the new councillors around the table. Congratulations on your results. Call for apologies. I see everyone's here. However, Councillor Duncan. Yes, just indicating I may need, need to leave early. We'll understand that if that occurs. Thank you very much. And I'll do the same. I have a Zoom call that I have to take uh, for local government at 4.30. <coughs> And if, if we are still in chambers at that time, the Deputy Mayor will, of course, take my space. Thank you. We have no public forum today, but I will remind you that we've got, at 1.30, um, pet farmers are making a presentation to us, not under public forum, and there's a matter relating within your agendas, uh, and that's Murray Holdaway. I uh, suspect that he may have somebody else with him to deal with that. The confirmation of order of business staff, but no changes that you're aware of. Thank you very much. Item number six, the confirmation of minutes. Looking for alterations and corrections to the council minutes from the inaugural meeting. Starting page six, looking for alterations, corrections six and seven, eight and nine, 10 and 11. So, would somebody please so move? Move. Thank you. Councillor Carter, Councillor Wilson, those in favour? Aye. Those against? Carry. Thank you very much. Moving to item number seven, the follow-up actions, um, page 12. And are you taking us through this? I can take you through. Um, you thank you, Your Worship. Um, just with so the new... Uh, benefit of the new councillors. This is a um, ongoing list that is generated from council meetings. So we try and capture everything that's requested at the council meeting or where a resolution requires a follow-up action. Um, and this just captures that and we provide a status update of each of them. They belong pretty much to most group managers. So what we normally do is if there's questions, we're happy to provide further clarification if need be, rather than go through each one of them. So I'm looking for questions around page 13. I have one, so further, second to bottom, third to bottom, uh, regarding the plaque at the new Mangaweka Bridge. I have previously reported to Assets and Council that I have viewed the plaque. I don't think it's in danger of being damaged, but it's reasonably well set back. Um, from my perspective, I believe um, that there's no longer risk and could see it closed, but does have, anybody have an alternate view? Councillor Hebra. Um, I, I have no problem with uh, where that plaque is. What I do have, a, what I think uh, would be great, is if they considered just making it a lot bigger than what it is. That would be okay, so, so it's not a safety issue, it's increasing the size of the script, isn't it? Yeah, because it's very hard to read. So could we take that as a direction, Councillor Calgary? Uh, my comment is around the, the there's an old sign still in situ there, mm. and it's detracting from the whole beautiful space that's been created in my view, and it needs to be taken down. The signage has been taken down, but the stand is left there. Is this the, the old sign of the, the old the old bridge? I, was, I, I remember it's where the where the the fire indication of how the fire status. So start, could we take it as an action that we change the perspective of that item? Um, yep. Sorry. Um, I do have a question I was going to talk to the Chief Executive and I forgot. 
around the need to um, get a desktop analysis of the Timatapihi um, extension build. I'm wondering if it could be done earlier, but I understand that you've got some staffing issues as well. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, if I'm, may you... Item four. Right, okay. Sorry, Worship. Can I, can I just return you to item 18 to make sure we've got that understood? If I may, um, you, you wish that to be closed, but a new one to be opened, it's, which is... Well, opened or adjusted. So it's no longer a protection for the plaque, yeah. but the asking that the words on the plaque be increased in size is very difficult to read. Uh, that's the issue, isn't it, Councillor Hero? Well, um, I'd just like to say, yes, and I didn't bring this up when it first got put, and we were told that um, a lot of that kaupapa was also from, from the other, other council that were in charge of putting that together. Yeah. And the removal of old signage. So, yeah. Perhaps um, staff could liaise with Councillor Dalgetty on where that is and what it is. Yeah, my, my problem, sorry, my, my challenge, Your Worship, is, is um, we understand that the old uh, plaque is too small. Um, I need would need to understand on behalf of staff what do our elected members want in that space? How big? What you know? Uh, it's uh, so just the specification that you're seeking from me. Um, could we, could council? Would you be happy if we delegated that conversation yeah, we, we to a conversation with through councillor Hera yeah. and and with regard to old signage, uh, council? They'll get it. Thank you. That resolves it. Yes, please. Thank you. I'll move on. Sorry, um, Councillor Loud. Just while we're on this page, um, point 17, um, just regarding the Bulls bus lane. Yep. Um, and it's a safety issue. Um, has there been any progress on that? Because I note that that was raised in May. So you're asking what progress has been made with regard to this? Um, if, if we're a staff member that can tell us. Um, I can speak. Thank you, Ms. Cross. Thank you. To can you come um, close to the microphones, please? Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, with regards to the cameras, we've identified some cameras that we think are suitable. We're just checking their compatibility with our software. And with regards to the bylaw that has been programmed um, for consultation. Thank you, Elaine. Um, just to add to that, um, there are two aspects that are required for this. The first is actually installing cameras and making sure that they are um, contained or are able to capture footage that is can be used for prosecution. And so that's the first thing that Gailene was talking about. The second part of that is then having the ability to prosecute. Uh, and that is quite a lengthy process to create a bylaw. Um, Council are um, reviewing the traffic and parking bylaw. You'll be part of that. And that will give us, for want of a better term, the teeth uh, to, to enable us to prosecute when the, when the cameras are up. Um, from the chair to you, I understand that some companies have been had a phone call to say that their drivers have been driving through it. Is that the case? I don't know if, uh, if any of the staff have done that. I'm not sure, sorry. No, no Hans team. I know that I personally spoke to one. <laughs> one one company driver and I said, please don't do this because the next one, next stage is, is a phone call through to your company. Yeah. Thank you very much. But we also have to gazette it and do a, there's a number of, um, another council was forced to um, return the fines because they didn't give enough warning to the public. So there is quite a, a long process we have to go through, unfortunately, um, in, in, in sense of legislation. Yeah. Uh, the following page, and this Councillor Carter. Item 21. Yes. Um, it's been an ongoing issue for quite a while regarding the fly tipping down under the Bulls Bridge or along the uh, Rangitiki River. And we've got into consultation here with uh, 
with horizons and that looking at putting up signage in that respect. Um, can we have some advice as to what the process is for those who can't read and how we get the rubbish removed? Staff, are you able to respond? Um, what, what has worship, may I? Um, what His Worship has just uh, advised with regarding staffing issues. Um, my uh, Chief Operating Officer is uh, on long-term sick uh, and we were only recently advised of that. Um, uh, so there are some questions I won't be able to answer here today and he's not here to, to answer them for me um, while we go through a process of... of um, uh, of segregating his, his responsibility to others in the organisation. So it's not a question I can answer now, I'm sorry. It's just that it's been an ongoing issue since I first started some three years ago. And it's been put onto Horizon's bucket to do, which they do nothing. And then people on the Rangitiki, ensuring it's, it's the Rangitiki District Council's problem. So we're trying to work out some means that we can tell people to have an avenue to go down. That will work. That's that's virtually what's the context of it originally. Councillor Carter and the Chief Executive, would you be happy to have an offline conversation around this matter as to how we progress it? Yes. I, I absolutely accept your sentiments that it has been an issue. There is a demarcation issue, obviously, between our council and Horizons with regard to responsibility. But the end result is the important thing, isn't it? So, Councillor Hero. Can I just make a comment? Certainly. Um, I'd like to say that, is that we're at, the, we're at the, that end of this issue. The front end of the issue is people should pay, don't dump your rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to now we, we're trying to fix up something that's yeah. uh, people are not taking responsibility for their own things. So, I mean, there's two sides of it. If we're going to be putting any promotion out. Um, any further items with regard to the follow up actions? No? All right, I'll move on then. Could somebody move the receipt of this report, please? Thank you, Councillor Duncan. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Those in favour? Uh, those against? Carried. Thank you. Move to the next one of the Mayor's report. Um, first of all, I'll just move its receipt and then we'll go through it. Looking for a second. Uh, Councillor Dalkey, those in favour? Aye. Those against? Um, there's a couple of other recommendations, that I think, pieces in there. I'm certainly not going to read my full report. I will take it as read. Um, and take any questions around it. Normally, councillors, what happens is it will be accompanied by a list of all of the places and engagements I've had. So because we've just had an inaugural meeting, um, we haven't caught up with that. But normally, you would see literally every single day what functions I've been to, the appointments I've had, unless it's of a personal nature. So. Um, if somebody is coming to me asking for assistance and there is sensitivity about their position or name, it may just say I've met a ratepayer. Um, a lot of the minor meetings we don't even list, but it gives you the pertinent ones. However, there is a decision to be made here. So um, we have what's called Zone 3. So Zone for the new councillors the country, from a local government perspective, is split up into certain zones. We're in Zone 3, which extends from Gisborne, Wairoa, down to um, Tararua, and includes Taranaki, ourselves, obviously Manawatu, Palmerston North, um, and Horofanua. So that's the zone. Um, and... Currently, well, it has been co-chaired by the Mayor of, of Wairua and myself, which is a little bit unusual. 
and so we also nominate a representative to be on the National Council of Local Government that meets in Wellington. So we've called for nominations for that position and we've had at this stage two people express interest in going as the council zone representative, zone three, to National Council. And ultimately we'll need to make a, a, a vote um, the two nominees are the Mayor of New Plymouth and the Mayor of Manawatu. So Helen Warboys, you'd know quite well, she's our next door neighbour if you like. Um, we have some shared services with Manawatu. Um, Neil Holden, the Mayor of um, New Plymouth, you probably wouldn't know as well. His background, um, he came to council with a very much a business perspective background. He's been involved um, in the gas and electricity, sorry, electricity entities at very, very senior levels. He has a huge desire to be on national council. It will come down to what will be probably a fairly close vote. You will be asked if you want to go to zone meetings, or you have already been asked, because the next <coughs> one is in Wanganui fairly shortly. But if I am there voting on behalf of this council, any indications <coughs> as to your views? And I know it is fairly difficult, especially for new councillors that have never come across these people. They are very different people. <coughs> first? I'm wondering if um, Mayor Orboys has, has submitted uh, bio or, I mean, we've got the information from Neil. Is there any complimentary information from Helen? Um, no. So uh, Neil's put out his position via email, etc. Um, that I think I passed on to all councillors. Um, Mayor Helen has been nominated from Tararua Council, and I think her second... Uh, Tracy. What's that? Mayor Tracy from Tararua. Yeah, Mayor Tracy from Tararua. And the second, I believe, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not I to say. Thank you, Murray. Can you just take a seat and we'll call you uh, shortly? Um, any questions around them? Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, you okay. have dealt with these people, obviously. Um, probably, I, I, from a new councillor, I would probably take a lead from where you are leaning. Uh, if you can um, say that now, but yeah, that's probably where I'd take my um, recommendation from. Councillor Morn, thank you for that question. It's a really good question because I'm a little bit torn. We have a very close relationship with Manawatu. Um, from a business perspective, I would probably go with with New Plymouth. Um, and largely because of the water entities. You know, he is very, very focused on the water entity. And the, the deciding factor would be for me that he will be an entity B. So we unfortunately sit on this boundary between entity B and C. Um, so that would be my steer because of that, that position. Thank you, Councillor Duncan. Thank you. Um, so my question would be around uh, any advantages to going with um, Manawatu as they are our shared, shared services. And it sounds like even if we are an entity B, we may still continue that relationship um, with a whether that would, would have any bearing on an advantage for, for the Rangatike if we went with them. Yeah, and, and that's the tough one because, yes, we do have a relationship with Manawatu and it's likely to continue in some shape or form. And if the entities don't go ahead, then they're calling for relationships between regions. That's the, the talk of Auckland and Christchurch. Um, and of course, Mayor Helen has a very uh, 
specific view around that, you know, around three walls, etc. Councillor Wilson. Uh, Your Worship, I'm happy to uh, move recommendation further to uh, to to an effort to further this conversation to a resolution, and I would move recommendation uh, recommendation two that um, we nominate Mayor Neil Holt uh, to be our representative. I'm happy to speak to that if the opportunity, and I get a second. Yeah, I'll second. Second, Councillor Council Lambert, seconding. Can you speak to it, please? Uh, yes, I think um, the question has just been raised by uh, Councillor Duncan Wilds Valid. I do believe it's actually slightly on a, on a slightly different. Uh, different topic that we're talking about here. Uh, this is LGNZ. Um, I think your earlier comment about a Zoom meeting that you're taking uh, today uh, with regards to um, a Zoom meeting and potential for the new entities will be an important relationship to have with this uh, Mayor from New Plymouth. And I think that is a logical step for this council this stage to, uh, to, uh, to go further with that. Thank you. We've had one speaker in favour. Any other speakers? Thank you, Councillor Dalgetty. I, I think it is a um, tricky decision on the information in front of us, um, but I am going to vote against the motion. Uh, um, I know this is not the three waters debate, but um, I I am advocating for a regional base around the three waters. And so, therefore, I would like to support our fellow Horizon members and therefore Helen. We've had one speaker for, one speaker against. Understanding orders, by the way, for councillors, understanding orders, once we've had three speakers for and three, spe or and three speakers against, then I must go back to a reply. Any further speakers? Thank you, Councillor Duncan. Thank you. I'd like to support Councillor Delgetti on that stand. Um, I find that we know Helen and Helen knows us and um, I can, I instinctively <coughs> feel that we would have more of a chance with someone who knows the district um, and shares the river, which I think is also going to be become more and more important um, going forward. Um, so I'd like to speak against the motion. Any other speakers? Well, no, obviously, I support Councillor Wilson, but for the reasons he mentioned. So. Thank you. Any further speakers? I'll be, so, so, uh, I'll be supporting um, the motion put forward by um, Councillor Wilson. We've had three speakers for any, any further person speaking against. Write a reply back to uh, thank you, Mayor yeah, Thank you, Worship. Just looking at the order paper here, we do have some information from uh, the Mayor of New Plymouth. I, sorry. I don't see anything from um, from Mayor Helen for us to, to be considering. Uh, um, I think Councillor Duncan quite rightly said this is not a uh, sorry Councillor Delgetti quite rightly said this is not a three waters debate. This is about LGNZ and a range of other matters. Uh, this is far bigger and far broader than that as one topic. So I do believe that the representative has put the name forward with the information that's been supplied to us on the order paper. It's appropriate to uh, to uh, seek our nomination, and um, therefore I've, uh, I've moved it accordingly. We've now had right of reply. I must put it to the vote. Those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Motion is carried. Thank you. Right, before we move on, I'll go to we have the, the benefit of Federated Farmers um, and Murray Holdaway. And Murray, could you come forward? Um, I have a maximum amount of time for you, Murray. Yeah, that's right. If that can be quicker, then fine. Yeah. Um, that would include any questions. Hopefully, you might also be able to give us a steer as to how we may see the future. Would you like a chair or would you prefer to stand? No, I'm, I'm on for you standing down to make sure that I don't and sit down and take too long. <laughs> Thank you very much. And if you could just introduce yourself and your role within Federated Times. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. Th thanks, everyone. I see a few familiar faces here. So, um, yeah, I'm Murray Holdaway, I'm President and Manager of Manager Randy Tiggy Federated Farmers currently. Um, 
and uh, I really appreciate the chance to come up here and and um, just have a bit of a discussion around the government's response to Haywakarik and R. And I'm sure that uh, I understand there's a really good uh, rural background in this council. Uh, I'm sure that um, you've all got some understanding of what Haywakarik and R is, and it's not a new term. And so um, I don't need to go into too much background. But so I'll, I'll do a presentation. Hopefully, it'll only be 10 minutes, and then get into some questions. So. Just going back in time, a bit of background, 2017, uh, the government decided that agriculture needed to be into the uh, emissions trading scheme, so it effectively legislated for that. Uh, the, 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 the whole um, agriculture sector uh, knew that was not a good story, and so um, quickly got, around, got together and, um, and formed uh, a group, went back to the government and said, hey, uh, would you be prepared to give us a a couple of years, three years, to, to, to try and design our own um, emissions pricing scheme and managing and um, pricing scheme. So the government uh, decided that, that, yeah, that was a good idea. So that Haywaka Ekanoa was born, that's what the name of it is. And really important to remember that Haywaka Ekanoa Group includes MPI and MFE. So the government had representation on, the, on that committee right from the start. So um, uh, back um, a couple of months ago, three months ago, Federated, uh, uh, sorry, Haywaka Rekana Committee had uh, designed their scheme. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you understand, there was a whole lot of angst and, and toing and froing within the agriculture sector around exactly what we should be doing. And um, uh, uh, politics is alive and well in the agriculture sector as it always has been. Uh, but we came to a, conclu a conclusion about what we'd present to government, did that. Climate Change Commission uh, had the right to, to oversee that. Um, they had a few questions and comments on that, and then it went back to the government to make a decision. And just um, about three weeks ago, the government came back with their proposal. Uh, it, it, it's got a consultation until the 18th of November on this proposal. And then I understand that they've got a very short time frame from then to when they put the thing uh, up in front of government. So um, so it's gonna happen fairly quickly. So, and, and, and of course it's a fairly short consultation period anyway. Now, I wanna go into just some details around what some of the principles around the design of the Haywaka Ekanoa proposal <coughs> and how the, 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 what the government has come back differs. So first of all, one of the principles that, that uh, the industry um, insisted on was that the, the, the design of the system was there uh, to encourage the uptake of available and viable mitigation options. In other words, you know, if, if, if we didn't have anything that we could do in response to this, uh, to this charge on us, um, then, then it, it was simply a tax. And so there had to be mitigation options and they had to be viable. So that was one of the first principles. The second one was pricing for methane was for the additional warming only. And we'll possibly come back to that a little bit. It, it's around the issue of, of methane because it's a short lived gas, um, lasts about 12 years, and then there's only a very small portion of it lasts after that. So if we're only emitting the same amount of methane this year as we were 12 years ago, it's only replacing what we emitted 12 years ago, and effectively it's not adding to warming. And um, and I'll come back to the um, government's targets on um, on the emissions stuff uh, later on and, and, and refer back to that. Our third point um, was that the, the uh, agricultural sector insisted that any, um, any system that were designed around uh, pricing methane uh, had to take in, into consideration the impact on the economic and social, um, especially of rural communities. And the fourth point was that there would be no emissions leakage. And um, I, I, once again, I assume emissions leakage is, has been talked about enough. And that's simply where uh, if we reduce our food production in New Zealand as a response to, to our methane uh, emissions, uh, but somewhere overseas takes up that food production because the demand is still there, you know, I mean, we have. Um, we're well proven now, uh, we are the most efficient emission producers per 
um, unit of food. So if somebody produces the same amount of food overseas, then the global emissions actually go up uh, and we don't achieve anything that we set out to. So, so the industry insisted that was no emissions leakage likely to occur. So what the government had come back to us, and, and I'll go through those same things effectively because um, uh, well, well, Minister O'Connor is suggesting that um, what they've come back to us is some minor tweaks. Uh, they are significant changes. Um, so, so the first point is about um, uh, the mitigation. So, uh, so now, under the government's proposal, uh, of course, there's still no mitigations, uh, but the price uh, the way that the methane price is set is set solely on achieving the targets. So under Haywakari Kanar, it was going to be set with, with achieving the targets as one of the objectives. The other objectives were around um, social and economic impact, uh, whether, whether leakage was occurring, um, and there's another one I can't think of. But, but now, the minister is setting the final price, and he is setting it solely to achieve the targets. So the economic impact is not a consideration. Second point uh, is around um, the pricing and targets for methane. Um, and it's, and it's, again, it's about this methane being a short-lived gas. Um, so uh, Again, I'll get into the targets a little bit now, and, and again, these are the things that have been banded around quite a bit. Um, so the methane, I'll start with the CO2 emissions. The target for CO2 emissions in New Zealand is for, to be a net zero by 2050. So net zero means that we are neither warming nor cooling, we're neutral. So all emissions, less all sequestration equals zero. So, so that's the tar target for CO2, is to get to that position by 2050. The targets for methane are to reduce by 10% by 2030 and to reduce to somewhere between 40, uh, 24 and 47% by 2050. Now, those things are based on uh, the old concept that was developed about measuring methane um, probably um, uh, 25 years ago, in international measures. And since there's been a, a, a quite a bit of new science um, taking into consideration the short-lived aspect of methane. And so uh, while I said if effectively it lasts 12 years and after that uh, it only replaces what was emitted 12 years ago, there is about 0.3% of it that actually does carry on having a, a warming effect. And so on that basis, to get to a net zero equivalent position for methane, what we should be doing, all we need to be doing is reducing our methane emissions by 3% by 2010, but the target's 10%. And the target's for, to, 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 again, to be in that neutral position of heating, uh, we, we, we need to get to 10% by 2050. The targets are 20, 24 to 47%. So, so that's the, the, the second um, fundamental thing, the shift from Hay Walker Ekenawa to the government's proposal. Um, third one is that the government's own modelling suggests that emissions leakage will occur. Um, and it, it's, it's different level um, depending on what scenarios and depending on how you break it down. Um, but uh, for sheep meat, they're actually modelling that it will, emissions leakage will occur at a rate of 133%. So it'll be 33% more methane emitted globally if our sheep, num sheep numbers drop in New Zealand to achieve our emissions reductions here. Um, but, but their own modelling is pretty conclusive that emissions leakage will occur. So, you know, to some extent, any gains we get from reduced emissions in New Zealand will simply be replaced by emissions overseas. 
And the, 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 the fourth thing, um, which, which wasn't a priority uh, early on, although the farmers were really strong on this, is about sequestration. And so under the ETS, there are some quite strict um, rules around the size of the, of the uh, woodlots or forestry blocks before you can claim sequestration. And uh, uh, quite logically, there's a lot of farmers who had got riparian strips and, and shelter belts and small woodlots who couldn't qualify to go into the ETS. And we said, well, you know, if, if we're going to have this emissions trading scheme or AWOC or Econo, some sort of a scheme where we're paying for every one of our animals, then, you know, these trees are sequestering carbon, so we need to be able to claim back for them. Uh, the uh, proposal that the government have come back to us uh, has raised some serious questions. They actually haven't said no, <coughs> sequestration is not in there, but they've raised some serious questions ar around whether they are uh, going to be able to put something in place to do that. So, so at least in the short term, uh, farmers won't be able to claim for those riparian strips and shelter belts uh, to, to get a credit. Um, right here, so I've explained those um, those short, short little cases. So, so th this first point about um, about submissions. Uh, one of the key points about submissions is the targets, because as I talked about before, you know, if, if we're expected to, to meet targets to go well beyond what the rest of the New Zealand community is in terms, you know, with their CO2 emissions, and if that's going to have a significant impact on the agricultural sector, then there's got to be a serious question around that. And one of the ways of of, um, of mitigating the impact on the agriculture sector is at least have those targets down scientifically backed at 3% for the 2030 and 10% for the 2050. And it's a, of course, it's a heck of a lot easier and we would have to reduce the agriculture economy by a whole lot less to achieve a 3% target by 2030 than a 10%. So, so that, that's one of the first and critical things and in, in, in all honesty, um, our Federated Farmers um, analysis of it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the government's proposal we, or, or Haywalk or Econo or um, you, you may be aware of this, some other proposals floating around at the moment. There's another um, a group of farmers called Walker Adrift who are, are proposing a, a separate thing at this stage as well. And, and ultimately, it doesn't matter which one we do if the targets are set wrong, the targets are going to drive the price because the price is set to achieve the target. So if the target is higher, the price is going to be higher, a bigger impact on us. So if we're able to get the target down to, to, to a scientifically based level, it's going to have less, the, the price is going to have to, 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 can remain lower and the impact on the agricultural sector less. Um, now, now, so, and, and, and again, um, I'm sure you've all read about the, um, the expected impact on sheep and beef farming in New Zealand, 20% reduction. Now, there is some suggestion once Federated Farmers got into the modelling and had a look at it, uh, that, that that is actually a conservative figure because that is assuming some mitigations are, are, are uptaken by sheep and beef farmers, but those mitigations are actually not available yet. So it's assuming that they're going to become available before 2030 and a percentage of sheep and beef farmers will uptake those to reduce the emissions anyway. It appears that if those mitigation options are not available, um, the models would suggest it's close to 30% or 29%, I think the figure is, of sheep and beef farmers that will be under threat. So it's not hard. Um, to imagine what uh, what would happen in this district, um, you know, given it, 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 it's probably um, New Zealand's most intensive lamb lamb finishing all, uh, you know district in New Zealand. Um, if 30% of the farmers uh, were to, um, to to go out of business, um, you know, what would happen? There'd be, certainly be some surplus capacity. Um, and, and the ongoing impacts of that. So, um, you know, I don't need to tell you, you people, um, some of the impacts of that. 
On top of that, dairy has talk, uh, talked about um, over 5% reduction. And so that, that will have an impact as well, obviously. Um, so, so what, uh, and again, uh, just, just to highlight, um, but I'm sure I don't need to do most of you. So, so what will that, in, what, what impact will that have? And I mean, it's clear that, that the way that other settings are at the moment in the agriculture sector, talking about carbon farming at the moment, that if a whole lot of this land comes on the market, uh, we're, we're not going to see amalgamation of sheep and beef farms. We're going to see a massive impetus towards um, forestry, out of pastoral into forestry, and, and again, some of the longer-term impacts of that. Um, you know, I, I don't need to, to tell you, but it's but it's pretty scary stuff. Really. Um, and, and I guess long-term, um, from specifically for you people who are responsible for, for the financial management of the Rangitiki district, what happens to your rating base under those sort of circumstances? So look, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there and um, and take any questions if I need to. Um. Murray, I'm anticipating there'll be a number of questions, but first of all, in terms of process, councillors, the reason I, I could bring this, the right to bring this conversation to the table is because in our order paper there are a piece that we are currently doing preparing submissions on this bill and there's also the piece on your agenda the table documents on pages 99 I think it is. so that's the right to bring it to your table the question from me um, would you be prepared to work with us around some possible suggestions in terms of our submission process? Or could we simply add our names as a council to your submission? To your submission? Uh, the, the, the first option uh, I, I think would be the best and we're certainly happy to do that. Thank you. And presumably this is a submission that you will front if you can by select committee. Is it, does it go to select yes, committee? Yes, it is. Yep. So, Councillor Council Wilson. Thank you, um, Your Worship. Thank you, Mario. I think that's a great suggestion you've just put forward that we could work with uh, pet farms, particularly mm. on this, on this, uh, on this item, which is very pertinent to our, to our area. Um, I'd just like to understand this, the mitigation thing, as you said. You know, without a mitigation, you've got nothing more than tax. Um, what, what in real terms does a mitigation look like? Is it increased planting, or is it just simply stock reduction? What, what does, what is, what is, what is, what options do you think are open to you with regards to that? Good question. I, I, in, and um, you know, again, there's a whole lot of talk out there, and it, and it becomes a bit confusing at times. But methane emissions are, are very closely related to the amount of feed you put in the animal. It's not the number of animals. So, so there's a lot of talk in the dairy industry early on that if they reduce stock numbers, um, you, you know, they, they they won't necessarily reduce production if they feed the cows better. But if you actually reduce stock numbers and feed the the lower number better. It's the same amount of feed going through, you'll get the same methane emissions. So, uh, so um, the, the, the only way of cracking that relationship is by technology. So you, you're talking about putting uh, some, some chemical thing in the, in the rumen of the animals uh, to, to, to mean that that link between feed intake and methane emitted is broken. Thank you. I have questions for Councillor Moore and Councillor Rokawa, Councillor Dalgetty, Councillor Moore. Okay, um, Murray, um, I read somewhere that the science, there's science out there that's saying we're overestimating our methane emission by about 50%. So uh, is, is Federated Farmers taking up that science and saying, well, we're actually not as bad as what the government's saying? Can you well, I suspect that that's that's more of the, the the line of the targets the targets are being that 10 percent target is set based based on the the weight of methane not and not the the, the warming impact of it uh, because it, i mean it is a it's a whole lot more um uh, potent gas but because of the short time frame of it you know to get down to that 
neutral position in terms of warming. So, so I mean, it, it's, 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 it's brought a change of dialogue and a change of thinking. It's not about the, the, the gross emissions. It's actually about the warming impact. And that's what the Paris Agreement actually actually said, if you looked at the finer details, it was to hold the warming to less than one and a half degrees, preferably less than two degrees. So, so if we think about methane in terms of warming impact and not the gross emissions, then, then, then it that, comes back down to that point. Instead of a 10% reduction, we only need a 3% reduction. And so, yes, fair aid farmers have been, have been harping on about that for, for, um, for 18 months. Councillor Roy Carver. Councillor. Uh, sort of following on from <coughs> you, um, the scientists, did you pay for the Who are the scientists that, 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 give you, that gave you clarity on 3%? Uh, uh, yeah, really good question, and and um, uh, science is is not as black and white as it seems, and uh, and so it is quite new science, and, and we're, we're I mean as we're as we're getting into understand this this um, emissions issue more and more, um, obviously that's creating the op the need for science to answer different questions that we haven't asked in the past. So so, but yes, it is. It is well proven internationally by peer-reviewed scientists. It's not federated farmers scientists, and and so we have not been involved in, in seeking out that science. It's been scientists that have that discovered that, and it's been peer-reviewed. I go, Councillor Dalgetty, and Councillor Lambert. We will be starting to run close yeah. for time then. Mm, I've, I've got some requests for the staff. Thank, thank you very much for your presentation. Look, I feel this is a really complex issue, mm -hmm. and this is the biggest issue facing ag in the, for the last, 50, you know, for the last fifty years, and it is going to affect our district. We're talking about twenty percent, or maybe thirty percent, of our farmers being put out of business, and I believe, you worship, we should be workshopping this to have a better understanding of the implications. Totally support that, but we have got some fairly tight submission dates that we need to engage and go to. Councillor Lambert. Uh, you still be pushing the sequestration side of things, like the way they've geared it up now that only certain amounts of things are considered acceptable for carbon neutralisation. Yep. Like that, that'll still be pushed, I hope. A absolutely. Um, I, I mean, there is, there is some issues around uh, how do you quantify and, and administer that scheme? Okay. And, and it's no point in having a scheme in place that it costs more to administer yeah. um, than, than, than it's giving you benefits. Um, <coughs> but, but, I mean, apparently in Aussie, uh, that they can, they can um, by, by a satellite, tell if somebody's cut down a tree when they're not supposed to. So surely the, there's technology out there to do Well, you'd think so. Councillor Hirai. Oh, sorry, Councillor Duncan beat you by a short nose. Councillor Duncan, Councillor Hiraya, um, but please be brief. So just going back to your four, um, the four things that, that were the main questions in uh, Heo Waka Ekenoa, uh, which took three years to write, you're saying, with, with consultation with the government, and they were the viable measures, the methane life of 12 years, uh, the pricing, um, taking into account society and rural, you know the impact on rules and the emis no emissions leakage and uh, given that the, the minister is now saying that he believes that they've tweaked it how do you feel that this new um, is, this a, is this a tweaking or do you think any of that three years was taken no, into no, account? No, no, Federated Farms response is that, is that um, we, we were in the tent with, with Heiwaka Reganara, and we were not comfortable with all aspects of that, um, but, but the proposal that's come back, we are strongly opposed to. It, it is a fundamental shift. Thank you. you. Councillor Hirai's last speaker, oh. and then I'll be looking to put a recommendation or motion on the table. Councillor Well, I'd like to support... Um, Councillor Dalgetty about the workshopping, and it is a, a complex issue around climate change in this country. And I've just come, come off a of hui, actually, that's not necessarily focused around federated farmers, kaupapa, but um, 
uh, we had a presentation from a person that sits on the financial side of it and what impact does that have for climate have on business around uh, within our country. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that she, she, and she was, one of the key things that sort of stuck in my head from, from her was um, the ways in which we as a planet or people, how are we going to do something? And pretty much what she said is that unless there's going to be something catastrophic that happens to our to this world, we anything we do is going to be not enough. And so I think that it is, as much as these submissions really, I think that is a, a, a real issue that we've got to... Ed, can I just make a final point, because the, the, the question um, about workshopping is really important. It, it is a wicked problem, because if we don't do anything, I, I mean, it's, it's clear to us all that the impacts of, of weather events is having a, a, a bigger impact in making it harder to produce food anyway. So so doing nothing is not an option, um, but, but it's 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 how we do things and actually uh, keep a balance of, of our the economic and social needs of the communities um, uh, you know, with us on the way. And perhaps, Councillor, um, and I've just asked my Chief Executive, would it be appropriate if we moved a motion that councillors, and we'll name them, work with staff and fed farmers to prepare our submission for the pricing of the emissions trading scheme and also the other submission we'd need to do on the um, carbon credit reforestation bill. Um, staff, would you see a difficulty with that as a motion? No problem. No. Look, I, I will so move and literally... Um, excuse me. We just need to write that down. So yeah, I'm no. just going to do that. So the motion would be that councillors, and we'll get some names in a minute, work with council staff and federated farmers to prepare our submissions to the pricing of emissions um, legislation and there's the other one on sorry I'll find it now the afforestation one give me the terms Afforestation wish it was, uh, was an email sent oh, yeah, yeah, I was wanting something that now would have been yeah, slightly it's different. Right it's right. on the submission pages that we've got to prepare. Yeah. We just need to get this right. Page 19. Page 106. While we're just checking that, would somebody move that the report on the pricing agriculture emissions submission be received? Councillor Rokawa, Councillor Lambert, seconding those in favour? Aye. Those against, carried. Councillor Lambert, seconding. And carried. So if we go to page 76, so it would be worded as the pricing of agricultural uh, emissions and the national direction for plantation and exotic carbon afforestation. So it's on page 76, we cut and paste that. While they're typing that, councillors, who would like to be involved in this process? Councillor Morn, Councillor Dalgetty, Councillor Hero. I have a question. Councillor Duncan and myself. Sorry. Can I make a comment? Certainly. No, I just, I, this is really serious. I really want yeah. everyone to really do some homework on this and get an understanding of it because yeah. it is serious for our district. We will certainly workshop it with all of council, but we've got some very close dates that we have to submit to these, so, so this is dealing with them in the 
That's probably fine with what we've got. I think we've got a fair voice on that. Mm. Um, <coughs> But just a quick question: What what percentage of farmers and rural landowners does Federated Farmers represent? It's a, it's a really good question. Uh, it's really it's really hard for a couple of reasons. Uh, how do you identify what is a farmer? You know how how, do, how small a, a land block do you go down to? And then there's so many um, farmers or farming companies that own multiple businesses. Um, but Federated Farmers probably represents something less than 50% of eligible farmers. Right. <coughs> so, councillors, we had the recommendation that the working group of three, and will be more than three, uh, that a working group of elected members made up of one, we've got Councillor Dalgetty, Councillor Morn, uh, Councillor Duncan and myself, so be four. For that's I'm happy to move that. Um, looking for a seconder to it. Councillor Duncan, are you wishing to second? Um, look, I think it's all been said quite effectively by Councillor Duggerty. This is probably the biggest crisis that farming faces over the last 50 years. Um, we will see, or we could well see, uh, huge land use changes within our district in the very short term. And um, I'll leave it there. Any other speakers? Otherwise, we'll put it straight to a vote. So I can see that everybody's likely to be in Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Um, please note that we will, the council will wish to, when that submission is prepared, will wish to present to Governor. Mm. All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the effort that you put in and, uh, within this role. Thank you for reaching out to me. And we played phone tag a little yeah. bit, which was great. So, a real Pre privilege. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, councillors, um, for entertaining that within this council meeting. Move for chief item nine, the chief executive's report. And would somebody like to move that it is received? Thank you, councillor Wilson, councillor Hero. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. I pass to the chief executive. Thank you, worship. Um, I'll take. Um, point two is read. Point three um, is also listed as point two. I'm sorry. Um, regarding the PFAS results, um, you will recall that um, uh, we have done some testing in the uh, water in bulls to assess its level of compliance with New Zealand standards. Um, and you'll see in the table that's been uh, put on our website and provided to the Bulls Community Committee that we are well under um, the specified limits for New Zealand. Um, for councillors, please, we'll take the questions as we run through the report. So looking questions two into three, Councillor Wilson. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Quick one. Um, what length of time is a fixed term with staff work? What is that? What's a fixed term under for your right. employment? Uh, in, ter in terms of point two? Yes. Yeah. So a fixed term is where we have specified a particular term. It could be six months, it could be a yeah. year. It could no, be it's, a, it's a range of time, but it's a fixed yes. term in that respect, but yes. not, a, not a fixed term, is it? It's an open contract. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, second Sorry. one, if I Sorry. may. Go ahead. You worship now the PFAS. Um, just want to understand and, uh, and appreciate your earlier comment that. Um, with one of your senior staff, and not being, you may not be able to answer this question, but when we're looking at the at the scale of the measure, is it an exponential scale between three and seven? I mean, by that I mean a, 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 a an earthquake at a at a five versus an earthquake at a six is a significantly bigger. So, what is the measure of that scale? We said we've got three there on and two of the numbers versus the zero point zero seven. Right. 
So what, is, is there a correlation to that? Do you, do you know how that scales? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Thank uh, you. I'm not sure if it's a linear uh, or, or um, yeah, that's not good. Could, could I just speak on that? Please. Um, that's through the, through the microgram. Excuse me. The directness through the chair. Oh, sorry. Thank you. That's yeah, right. Sorry. Right. sorry. <laughs> Where is it? May I just comment on this? Yes, certainly. Um, to to Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Wong. To uh, um, Councillor Wilson. Right. The. Uh, Units of micrograms per litre, so I believe it will be a linear yeah, yeah. Um, scale, not a logarithmic one like a um, book scale. Okay, so thank you. Twice as much will be twice as much. Yes, thank you. It's useful to have a mathematician. <laughs> 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 well, only my um, question from me. Mm. The most significant one to us in the past has been the testing by the Bulls rubbish dump. Is that one of the tests that have been done? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, I don't know the exact location because I know it's not here for me to ask. Um, the precise location for for each of those, unless you you went where Damien went. No. Can can we please check that that site has been tested? That it's not just testing um, other sites. So this is um, we are testing the water, um, and these results relate to water only so if your question um, if I think about it is relating to PFAS detected at the rubbish dump that's not part of this no, test no it was a test that was done detecting um, PFAS in the ground water in a bore below the rubbish dump right I, so I just want to make sure that that it is being tested as promised can I Councillor Lowe, Councillor. Just a question. Um, you're testing it in a year's time again? That seems an awfully long time in tests. Is that right? Can you able to answer that? I it's under the new drinking water standards yeah, required it's a, to do it yearly yeah, now. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Was that a question, Councillor Morn? You just put your hand up for a second. Councillor Hero. Oh, so my question is, um, given that uh, they're, they're telling us that um, you're required to test once a year to stay com within the rules, does that mean that as a council we could, if we decided, test twice a year? Uh, you, yes. Um, from an operations perspective, I would probably be inclined to do that if we were to notice that there's a marked change between one year and the next. Um, and you'll see that these test results are identical to those that were taken uh, three, I think, years ago. Um, and so if we're starting to see a, 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 you know, a closing of, of um, or to, the, to the recommended limit, then yeah, I would naturally be inclined to want to be more vigilant. Thank you. Thank you. Any further after that? Otherwise, we'll move on within that report. Please move on. Um, point three is the um, Tai Happy Memorial Park grandstand, in particular the um, Heritage New Zealand um, suggestion to have that, that on our on their uh, heritage list. Um, Gavin, you able to provide some more information on that, please? This report uh, refers to multiple pages yeah. within your agenda. Yes. So, um, Adina Foley, our Senior Project Manager, and I have been working through the um, report provided by Heritage New Zealand, and he Adina has al also contacted some Heritage Architects, just to get their viewpoint. Um, as you know, the submission may outline views for or against the proposal, or to raise issues to be considered and provide specific feedback. So staff would like to suggest a working group with, say, three elected members to work with staff in preparing a submission um, that identifies specific strategies and issues. And for example, council could put in a submission whereby it sits on the fence, neither for or against, but could highlight any specific strategies. 
And some that we've looked at as examples, um, Council could note items of actual heritage significance, such as the grandstand heating, bus uh, heating, sorry, the grandstand seating <laughs> and the roof canopy, distinct from the ground floor, um, which has been changed to um, changing rooms in the 1980s. Council could also raise the possibility of future adaptive reuse of the ground floor so that the facility is occupied and regularly maintained in future. Um, even without the heritage listing, restoration and adaptive reuse to the grandstand could entail significant capital expenditure. But the risk of the heritage listing is that it could have a sizable impact on time and cost. Um, it may add another layer of compliance and complexity to design and construction phrases, phases. So one strategy could be to reduce that risk to council would be that council submits to Heritage New Zealand to list the building only after all the adaptive reuse works has been done. So we could invite Heritage New Zealand to be one of the stakeholders in the design process and Council would apply the New Zealand Heritage Guidelines for the alteration works, but at the same time we would not be fully tied up with any resource or heritage consents. So that's kind of the purpose of having a working group with interested councillors. So we haven't got a recommendation sitting on the table in front of us for a working group yeah, as, yes. as such. Yes. One, so what, sorry, Your Worship, one has been prepared, so okay. you can put that on the screen. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. No, sorry, no, I've missed it reading it. Okay. Would somebody like to move that so it's up for discussion? And some names in there. So I'm just in there. I feel angry. Well, so don't come spirits. With it. It's totally appropriate that you're in that space. <laughs> so, um, but we need some names as well. Are you prepared to give us some names for that working working oh. group? Uh, well, I would I would suggest that the Northern Ward councillors might be interested. Yeah. So. You're suggesting yourself. Myself, so Councillor Hugo and Councillor Councillor Hugo and Councillor Jeff Wong. So that fits in with Councillor Hero as the seconder. I'm happy to put that straight forward to a vote. Sorry. No. Councillor Morn. Um, I don't want to speak against the motion, but I do um, want to make sure, because I look at this heritage stuff and say, if we want to do something with Thai Happy Grandstand, then it's under heritage. And just like the report we've been given, mm -hmm. that it could be a lot of cost, or we could be restricted in what we can do. So I just want to make sure that our, you know, the people on that working group understand that yeah, that being a heritage building, I guess, yeah. has a lot of, I have some benefits, but it has a lot of downfalls as well. Can I just ask, ask the question here, uh, Councillor Duncan and staff. So the report gives us plenty of time to be able to bring this back. Is this that you're preparing the submission meaning that it comes back to council for approval. I did just um at continuing uh councillor Morn's theme, um I was excited to hear um staff's uh, strategy of listing after after possible repurposing yeah. and um, so yes I would like that being considered any others we have a motion we're going to speak to the motion on the on the floor unless it's a question councillor Loudon 
Oh, I was just going to speak to the motion. Yeah, certainly. Well, um, the Rangitika has multiple um, buildings um, of heritage value, and if you treat Taipei Grandstand um, in this way, we need to look at treating all the buildings in the Rangitika in, in the same light. So, um, I myself am in favour of um, um, refurbishing the Taipei Grandstand. Councillor Wong. Um, I, I, I take um, Councillor Morn's point about finances. One of the um, reasons for listing, I believe, was that it opens the community up to apply for additional. Um, okay, but sorry. I just need to correct you, councillors, a, a little bit in terms of process. So at the moment, the motion on the floor is literally the naming of these people to work with a submission. If somebody wishes to move an amendment, as right. Councillor Dalgetty has suggested, uh, Councillor, somebody will need to move that as an amendment to the, to the motion, which would include, in your words, um, consideration given to. <clears throat> So at the moment we're only discussing the mo speaking well, I, to mo I, I, your I, comments are fair. Yeah. I, I I just want to Council make on. the other councillors aware that even though I do represent the northern ward as such, I am open minded to other considerations, especially fiscal, because I will be sitting on the uh, finance committee. So I'm I'm not tied in the wall my area. So Councillor Wilson, uh, Your Worship, as I've not spoken to the uh, to the motion, I request that the motion now be put. Mm. Is that right? Sorry, yes. Thank you. No, I must I must deal with that. Um, I've actually just got to check the standing orders around whether every the number of people that have had a right to speak. So I'll be technically correct on this. This is the first time for years I've had to go back to this. <laughs> There's a separate little clause of, which addresses that, and I think that you have the right to put it there. No, Sorry, I'm trying to do this correctly and I haven't used this for a long, long time.
Um, so I will rule on it. And I will accept that the motion, that the motion be put. However, I will reserve the right for somebody to move a second motion. So, so I'll put the motion to the vote. Those in favour, which is the people on it, carry. Thank you very much. If you wish to add a second motion, I will accept it uh, in terms of being able to to buy now. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I think the members have my intention uh, understood and <coughs> we'll go from there. Okay, thank you very much. I'll go back and do my homework, councillors. <laughs> Find out. On, Thank you, Worship. Um, item four is an, um, an update on the seismic assessment that's being being conducted. Uh, as before, I don't have Arno and I don't have Adina, uh, who's also sick. Um, so, um, in reading that, I, I, I note there are some uh, mathematic challenges. I see thirteen items, and it refers to three being closed and seven of the remaining eleven. I'm, I'm a bit confused with numbers, so I'm sorry I can't um, give more detail to that. But broadly, what we're saying is that we are looking at each of these buildings um, that, uh, as part of that assessment, we will be providing you, as part of the long-term plan considerations, um, uh, ways in which we might be able to strengthen or otherwise, as part of our LTP conversation next year. The, uh, um, the other thing that uh, I would highlight um, is the final sentence which spills over onto page 21. Um, what, that, what that's saying is that uh, under the Building Act currently, uh, if a building owner was to undertake particular improvements or changes, and there have been changes to the use or other of that building in that time, then um, we are, we, the building owner is expected to bring that building up to current standards and there are different measures for that typically it's used for how much money is being spent on the building so for example um, if we were to upgrade uh, this building and we were simply only going to strengthen it uh, seismically strengthen it to bring it to code um, or to sorry to bring it into line with the next new building standards we would be expected to bring this building up to exactly the same standard as current for disability access or fire detection systems for a whole host of other things. And so you can't, It's un, unless it's a decision made by you as elected members, typically we would go into the community uh, and homes or buildings that are being upgraded, we will ask them to comply with modern legislation. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want you to be familiar that it's not simply just doing the skin of the building without having to consider the building act at the same time. Um, go from my and, and second speaker, Council Wilson. Yep. Um, the Chief Executive, I understand that there has been an, an offer made around strengthening of buildings per se in Thai Happy, including um, potentially our council owned building. So I'd like to put a motion on the floor that staff provide a report to Council on the unsolicited offer received to seismically strengthen the Thai Happy Town Hall to give advice on the on the impacts of council's procurement policy and budget and any legal requirements that may need to be considered. So this stems, thank you, actually typed up. So this stems if we've received an unsolicited offer, um, which council will need to discuss at some length, yes. but we have to pay attention to our procurement processes and and the right for other companies to be, will also be seated at that table. Um, would you like to speak further on it? Uh, um, thank you, Worship. Um, Mayor Andy and I met with um, a particular provider uh, last week. Um, that provider has been active in some of the workshops that Council have been conducting in the district regarding earthquake strengthening buildings. Um, that particular provider offered an unsolicited offer to bring Thai Happy Town Hall to 70% of new building standard. Mm -hmm. um, 
I have received an offer yesterday. Uh, I can't discuss that offer because it should sit in public excluded. It's a commercially sensitive offer. Um, but uh, I've um, dis um, discussed it with worship and so the, the resolution for your consideration is there. Um, you should, I, I should be providing you with impacts on our procurement policy, etc. cetera, um, that uh, ensures we are being as compliant as possible or other decisions that you may wish to make. Councillor Wilson. Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, uh, Mr. Biggs, just going back to your earlier comment about the, uh, the implications within the Building Act and, and the costs, I'm, I, I am aware of that um, piece of the legislation. Do you know what our current financial threshold is that that would trigger? Because it does have a financial threshold. Again, mindful of your staff members, you may not have that answer. And if you don't, that's that's fine. But I do believe that there is a that there's a financial cap that then triggers that over. Um, would there be a possibility and signalling perhaps a, 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 an offline conversation that we may need to look at that with specific purposes to earthquake strengthening? As to what that number is to an effort to uh, assist with future earthquake strengthening. Perhaps a possibility? Um, th thank you, Councillor. I, I would, uh, the, f the first, to answer your first question, uh, off the top of my head, I think it's either 100 or 150,000, roughly. Um, and the quantum for the rest, the um, uh, strengthening Tai Town Hall is, is greater than that, so it would apply. Um, it's the question you've asked is exactly what I would anticipate being in the report to you, um, w which is, um, could that uh, requirement of the Building Act be, uh, be overruled by a decision of council? And you may wish to consider that as it is a council building and, and offset that. Um, and I must add, um, I would also bring to this table if a member of the public asked me to bring to your attention a reconsideration of, of that particular clause. So it's not unique only for this building. Thank you. Has, that question. has happened once before yeah. uh, to council. Yeah, thank you. The thank chief you. executive brought through um, a person seeking possible exclusion. Mm. Any other, anything else around the earthquake prone, earthquake? Recommendation, your worship. Yeah. So the recommendation through me moving that staff provide the report. Sorry, I'm trying to read the yeah. scroll. That, that, <laughs> that staff provide a report to council on the unsolicited offer received to seismically strengthen the Taipei Town Hall to give advice on the impacts of council's procurement policy and budgets and any legal requirements that may, may need to be considered. I will so move, looking for a second or two. Councillor Dalgetty seconding. Um, I'll speak to this. Look, um, we've had people come and speak in Thai Happy. We have about 17, I believe, businesses that are interested in understanding their options um, and working collectively together with council. I think that's an incredible opportunity and it's one that should be considered. Um, and I will leave, leave it there. Obviously, there's a lot more to water to go under that bridge. So, any other speakers to it? Councillor Duncan. I'd like to, uh, to speak in support of this. Um, and I thank staff for the work that will, will go um, into this and take this forward to get this, the town hall seismically strengthened, which is the, you know, uh, the will of the community. So, um, thank you very much. Sorry, yes. Right. Thank you, Your Worship. The only thing I'd add is that um, this has been unsolicited. Um, you'll recall at our last meeting uh, of the last training, we discussed at length a bit of business case that staff have put a lot of effort into, into a broader picture. Um, and I would just in, encourage that that is refreshed in your consideration that we are still continuing with a better business case uh, and looking at how best we use that. You, of course, may wish to only think of, of the earthquake strengthening as your option, and of course I respect that. But um, uh, the staff have been working diligently on, on, on uh, 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 the better business case process. Councillor Wong. Uh, 
Your Worship, may I ask if the second paragraph on page 17 is to what we are actually referring to? Um, of Chet's and um, the councillors correct. It's, uh, I think it's in, in your report, Your Worship. Yeah, referring to the meeting we have. Yes, so, thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Councillors, happy if we move on? Thank you. Chief Executive. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Carol, do you want to lead the submission of the conversation? Uh, Carol, Paul, Katrina, and Georgia, they're online to answer any questions. So these are. Um, Hang on. Councillor Carter. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I put it to the vote. Those in favour? No. I thought we'd already done so. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Carried. Hey, Carry got... on, please. Okay, I'll, I'll get Katrina to introduce this. Um, she's online and George is listening and who does our submission process. Um, yes, happy to introduce. Um, good afternoon, Mr Mayor and Councillors. Um, effectively, we put in submissions to central government and other agencies on behalf of council regularly. Um, we have set up a process for doing this in a, a way that um, I guess gets the best out of um, tracking all of those different submissions that that are open. Um, what we've set out in section 5.1 of the report is that proposed process that we're asking council um, to reconfirm the delegation to go through. So effectively it's a, a weekly check-in with the ELT on what's open. Um, the mayor gets updated by the chief executive. Um, officers are assigned to uh, delivering submissions on behalf of council um, and a monthly update goes on the council agenda. Um, where possible, we do try and include draft submissions in the council agenda, but the nature of uh, the timing of submissions in the council meetings means that this isn't always possible, but we do uh, aim to uh, circulate them at least by email to all elected members, or as you've seen previously in the meeting, um, sometimes a delegation of councillors are assigned. Um, what we've got is I'll take the rest of the, the update is read. Um, Georgia is available with me as well. She runs the process and happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you. Question from me because we've got the submissions tabled on 76 and 77 within the order paper. Um, one of the submissions, the Charities Amendment Bill, you're suggesting that we do not submit. I prefer that we do. And the reason before that, behind that, is that, for instance, I sit on things like the Duddings Trust, and we have some very small agencies that are trying to secure money that may have huge charitable benefit, but the process of being fully registered is cumbersome. Um, so on that, I would prefer that we submit to that item. Um, to change this, how do I do that? Do I need to move a motion or we can, can you take it as a council action? Um, thank you, Your Worship. No, we're happy to take that as a council action. Um, we'll go away and look at what staff resourcing we've got to submit on that. Um, my suggestion would be that um, they work with you on the comments and, and input into that submission. Okay, Georgia, are you happy with that? Thank you. Councillor Duncan? Thank you. And my question is around these short consultation periods. Obviously, there's a big variation in what uh, what time we're given and um, it seems to me that that's a, a real disadvantage when they are too short. Is there any way that we can push back or communicate to local government New Zealand that, that this is something that's causing us um, problems? Local government have brought up this very issue. Um, the amount of information and the time frames 
to submit are incredibly poor. Mm. And that's been highlighted through the Three Waters, but it's been highlighted through a number of other actions. Um, they're not listening. Councillor Duncan again. Subsequent, thank you. Um, so obviously they're not listening, um, but that means that we need to keep pushing. Um, so can I request that, this, that somehow that message does, is repeated? As long as we're experiencing this, we need to be saying that it's not good enough. Certainly, what could be appropriate, Councillor, would be for you to write out a motion to the zone meeting, um, would be a good way of moving that forward. Councillor Dalgetty. Uh, thank you, Georgia, for all your work. I just um, wanted, as a comment really, sorry, but um, the fire breaks in New Zealand issue, I, I believe, is an issue in our district, and especially with um, the um, forestry expansion that's likely and imminent. Um, so I believe it's a worry in the, in the Wairapa where you're the last man standing, so you've got a residential house totally surrounded by trees. Um, I know there's nothing we can do at this stage, but I think it's something we need to be very aware of um, going forward and how we might treat that. Would yeah. Council be happy if Councillor Dalgetty worked um, to help provide us the resource? Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah. So bearing in mind that we've set up policy and planning committee and there will be a series of workshops around how that committee will actually operate. These are questions that could well be part and parcel of that discussion. Can I just make a final comment about the submissions? Sure. So you will see in exactly the submission you've raised, Councillor Dalgetty, that where we feel it would have been helpful to have more time or more resource, we make that point in each of these submissions that we would have you know, really appreciated having longer time to do it and would have put a submission in, um, but the time frames and the resources didn't allow, and we, we do that where we choose as an ELT that we've got to take priority on some of the bigger issues, um, and the fire break one is a classic. That's why you see what you see in there. So that was due 21st of October. When did we receive advice around it? Georgia has a spreadsheet of everything. If she's got that in front of her, she might be able to give you that information now. If not, we could let you know. I'm just bringing that up now. Um, one thing about that one is it wasn't actually originally advised to councils. Um, it was kind of lucky that we, we actually heard about it at all. Um, but it was quite a short one. I'm just trying to find it now. My screen is not loading. Um, so the fire breaks. Where is it? This is <laughs> it's quite a quite a big I'm document. Making, the reason I make this comment, along with Duncan Councillor Duncan's comments, if you go to zone and they say the time frame is short, we actually have to be able to say, well, actually. This is when it came to us. Mm -hmm. It's not when it's due, but it's when we re first received advice around it. Mm -hmm. Can't seem to find it for some reason, so my apologies about that. But we do keep that record of when it comes in and when it when it closes, so we have a record of how long we had to submit to everything. I was just looking. Thanks for coming from the screen in front of me. I'd like us to find that and provide it for you. Yeah. Thanks, please. Georgia, if you're able to, please just keep on looking and uh, maybe message myself or Carol with that answer. So you worship anything further from your report? Uh, yes, there is a recommendation there. Yes, me. I wish you on the screen. Ah, right. Um, Councillor Hira. Can I just make a comment about this last lot of corridor we've had around uh, the submissions? Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes we can, well, no, I'm, I'm, I, um, thank you for saying that um, uh, all of these, all, all of the submissions have got different cutting off dates. Yes. 
in, but all of them would have come into us at different times, I should, I'm thinking. Um, I'm pretty sure that would be right. Because uh, sometimes we, we might think that something has happened and we haven't been onto it and getting it done. And we can clearly show that because if they've given us one week's um, notification to have a submission in, then that's clearly not right. But then again, we if we're not if we're not, not sure of what the timeframes are prior, we could have had it for two months, for instance. And then we only getting it, um, it might have only come to you as uh, come to our staff within a, a shorter time frame. So how do we make sure that we don't? Because you don't pounce on things when you don't have the full picture, is what I'm thinking about in, in that. Because just going through this paper, there's some of them have got that they are. You know, somewhere during December. And... Yeah. In fairness to staff here, um, the one we're talking about was received on the 30th of September and 21st of October. So you're going through the close down period of council mm -hmm. during this process. Mm -hmm. So that's probably been the big complication in terms of the space. Thank you. Thank you. A recommendation four, would somebody be happy to move that council delegate the authority to approve submissions um, made to other agencies on behalf of council to the mayor and chief executive provided all council elected members have been provided with an opportunity for input. <coughs> Councillor Rakawa moving, Councillor Lambert seconding. Are you happy if I put this straight to a vote, councillors? Put it to the vote, those in favour, those against. Barry, thank you very much. That brings us to the end of your report. Yes. <coughs> now we move on to item 10, the, the um, reports for decisions. The first is the remuneration for councillors and the 22-25 triennium and page 84. Are you taking us through this report? Yes, I, yes, I can do, Your Worship. Um, hopefully this paper is self-explanatory. Um, just to highlight a couple of issue, uh, a couple of key points with it, I suppose. So the remuneration authority issues us with what's called the remuneration pool. We must work within that pool. The mayor's salary is not part of that, but it, it's then up to council to decide how that pool is um, divvied up. But they also give us the minimum amount to pay for a counsellor. So um, His Worship and I worked through, they also spent, send this complicated spreadsheet, which we work through, um, which His Worship and I did on Friday, which is how we came up with um, the proposal that you've got in front of you. This is just a suggestion. It is open for discussion by council, and if need be, we can bring up the spreadsheet to see what any implications of any changes would be on those salaries. So, in, in adding to that um, discussion, uh, I'm probably the one unbiased person <laughs> in the room because my salary is separate to them. So, in discussing it with Mrs Gordon, I looked at um, past history. I also looked at the, the respective workloads of the Deputy Mayor and Chairs of Committee and the alternates or Deputies of Committees. So uh, in the past, um, often the deputies have had a very small role in terms of chairing council. Um, the deputy mayor's role has grown in significance and I look at um, the amount of work ahead of us. Um, Councillor Wilson, I suspect you're gonna be quite busy. Mm -hmm. But it, this is effectively my recommendation based on those histories. It is open for debate. And, and just make one more comment. Under 3.1.2, an allowance of $10,003. And $3. The three <laughs> is correct. We have to allocate every single dollar. <laughs> and, so it isn't a car park. And I will point push out push that <laughs> if somebody has more than one role under these sort of delegations, if you like, then they pick up both. So the deputy mayor would be chairing assets as well. So he picks up the, the money for the deputy mayor role and the chairmanship in much the same way that um, 
and I am prepared to announce that Councillor Hero will be Chair of Policy and Planning with the Deputy Councillor Duncan. And I'll also announce that, that uh, Councillor uh, Tracy Herrera will also be in charge of the looking after the Chief Executive's review process, but it will be done independently. So there's $2,000 associated with that role, as well as the chair. So take any questions around the process here. wanted to significantly move the councillor salaries up, the base salaries as part of that process, this process as well. And there is a strict time frame with getting back to the remuneration authority. It's literally within two weeks. Um, and if we don't make that deadline, then none of this takes effect until February, March next year, which is why we're keen you make the decision today for your own benefit. Councillor Lambert. Oh, my only question would be you, you were very, the two of you were very comfortable with the way this panned out in the end, so there's no sort of. No, you, know, no. you weren't sitting on the fence on any decisions or anything? No. 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 Um, yeah, there's quite a bit of discussion behind it and mm -hmm. quite a lot of, lot of looking at past history, etc. Um, yeah. Councillor Duncan. Is it appropriate to second it? Uh, move it. Move it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought the view was moving. But oh. Yes, would be appropriate. I'll move and it, you can happy to second it. But I'll take any questions. Anybody wish to speak to it? They've all gone up a little bit because the pool has gone up, but um, the chairs have had uh, probably a greater increase than the deputy chairs would be a comment. And congratulations of being deputy chair of finance. Councillor Hero. Um, can I just confirm that uh, in the last triennium, deputy chairs actually didn't receive anything? Just well, should have. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Councillor, are you happy if I put it to the vote? Yeah. Put it to the vote. Those in favour? Aye. Okay. Those against? Carried. Thank you very much. We move on to the appointments to committees. And by the way, we will need to stop at three o'clock as per standing orders, by the way, councillors. Okay, do you want me to take this? Certainly. Um, so what you've got in front of you is some of the appointments and some of the committees that council has. Um, and while the mayor has um, disclosed his likely um, people for chairman roles for the other committees, that paper will not come to you until the 23rd of November. Um, there's an opportunity at the get together that we're having next week to go over some of the intricacies of some of those, um, the other committees. So this is not the whole, the whole lot, but we thought we'd put in front of you what we have available at the moment um, to make some appointments that we, that we already know about. Um, so yeah, just be aware there is a, another one and also the standing orders and the code of conduct will also come to the 23rd of November meeting. Like significant pieces of work. Right, I think we can rattle through quite a bit of this. Um, recommendation one that the appointments to committees report be received. Looking for a mover. Councillor Wilson, Councillor Lambert, those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. So recommendation two, that the following appointments be made to the Martin to Bulls Wastewater Centralisation Project upgrade, Update Group. And I'm looking for some names on there. So has the one councillor from Southern Ward. I want a councillor from the Southern, Southern Ward. Councillor Carter. Uh, any other nominations, Southern Ward? 
One councillor from the central ward. Do you? I was just going to uh, make a recommendation, but if Councillor Dalgetty is recommending herself, yeah. you know. are you wishing to stand as well, or you have to? He's moving. Yeah. He's moving. Yeah. He's there both no. right. Councillor Dalgetty, are you happy to accept that? Happy now, thank you. Post award, Councillor Rokawa, you're happy to be on that? Yes. Thank you. And the Council of Wilson would be the chair there as um, assets and infrastructure. Would somebody like to so move that? Councillor Hero moving, Councillor Morton seconding. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Recommendation three that His Worship the Mayor be appointed as the Rangitika District Council representative for the Regional Transport Committee with Councillor Wilson as the alternate. I apologise for the confusion around the way this was set out, sent out. Um, this is one that all mayors are on right across the region. Um, would somebody like to move that? Thank you, Councillor Dalgetty, Councillor Duncan. Those in favour? No. Those against? Carried. I'm looking for a councillor to be appointed as the Rangitake District Council representative to the Passenger Transport Committee and an alternate councillor here. I'd like to nominate um, Councillor Duncan. Thank you. Nominate Councillor Duncan. 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 This is the Passenger Transport Committee. It would meet, it would meet at Horizons. Councillor Wong, would you? I would be interested. You'd be happy to do that? Yes, if I'm sufficiently. Okay. Is there any? Thank you. No, except with um, graciousness. Is there anybody who'd like to be an alternate? In the past, Councillor Dalgetty, you were an alternate and you were never required, were you? Yeah, all notified all week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's why not. Thank you. Oh, if that's the case, I'll be <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll nominate Councillor Morn. Yeah. So, we've, so we've got Councillor Wong, Councillor Morn, and put it to the vote. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Carried, thank you. Yeah, we had it. Um, yeah. I'll second. Thank you. Now, this next one is a little bit trickier. Recommendation five that His Worship the Mayor and Rita Batley be appointed as the Rangatiki District Council representatives to the John Bereford Swan Dudding Trust Advisory Committee. Now, I need to advise you how this is set up within the trust deeds. So the, the trustees stipulate that the mayor is always a member. But they also stipulate that if the mayor is urban, comes from an urban environment, that the other delegate must be from the community, not council, and be rural. Mm -hmm. If the mayor is rural, it swaps around the other way. So Rita Batley was reasonably recently and um, put in that position by council decision, um, it would be a shame to overturn. Council Wilson. Happy to move recommendation. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Council Wilson, Council Rokawa, those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. Thank you. Next one, recommendation seven, that is worship the Mayor be appointed as a longer Sorry, you're right. Recommendation six, that Councillor Jill Duncan be confirmed as the Rangatiki District Council representative of the Otai Happy Health Trust and that Councillor so-and-so be appointed as alternate. So um, I think that's absolutely appropriate because it's a council appointment because they thought they had the right to appoint. Um, are you happy to accept the position? I am. Looking for an alternate? <laughs> But I've got a, I, I have got a corridor about this place. Yeah, can we just try and find an alternate second to that? It would be suitable for it to be probably a northern councillor in this space. Um, sorry, Jeff. 
Can I say something, Your Worship? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, the other two Northern Ward councillors, um, one is on the trust and the other is part of uh, potentially um, okay. cannot I, be. Councillor Loudon, if you have an interest in them, that's fine. I worked in Taipei for nine years in the health industry, so I have an interest there. Absolutely appropriate. Mm -hmm. Councillor Hira, before we vote on this, your comment? Yeah, I've got an issue, well, not an issue, but I'd just like to say that. Uh, at the last triennium, I was put in as that representative, and the process was not put in place correctly from my point of view. Um, they never knew that I was actually the councillor that was appointed. And uh, it was quite a, I was never advised of anything. And so it's good that I know that you went to the last meeting. Um, so there is, there is a requirement um, on staff to advise all of these parties as to who has been appointed. Yeah, that so can, that uh, can happen, that'll be really good because okay. I don't know what it fell through something. So happy to move to put recommendation six to those in favour. Do you need a seconder? I'm having a seconder. Councillor Hero seconding. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those Aye. against? Aye. Carried recommendation seven. That is worship the mayor be appointed as the Rangitaki District Council representative for Bonnie Green Trust and to be an alternate. I think I helped set this up. It is in practice and principle, it is working. I don't think it needs to be me in the future. So I, I can do it, but I'm happy if somebody else takes it on. It does need to be someone from the central ward. Councillor Carter. Councillor Wilson. Nominating Councillor Wilson. Any other nominations? Looking for an alternate to that. Nominate Councillor Lambert. Councillor Lambert, are you happy? Yes, yes. Any other nominations? I would somebody like to move? You're moving, Councillor Carter, you're moving. Councillor They'll get you happy to second. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. Recommendation eight, that is worship the mayor be appointed as the Rangatake District Council representative for the Civil Defence Emergency Management Group Governance Body. Again, this is why <coughs> all, all mayors are on, and it's because the mayors need to... I think we're on number nine, sorry. We ain't sorry. Sorry, my apologies. Thanks. I was moving it. Um, need someone to move the, that it is for a car accounts of the heavy. Any discussion? Put it to the vote. Those in favour? Okay. Now we're on recommendation nine. That for the November 20th. 22 meeting his worship the mayor and councillor so and so be appointed to the creative new zealand assessment committee so we need another councillor who wishes the reason this one says that for the november 22 meeting is that you'll be discussing the makeup of the whole um, Creative New Zealand Assessment Committee and whether it continues at the 23rd of November meeting and this meeting is beforehand. So we just need at this stage, um, His Worship will um, attend the meeting which just need another councillor and perhaps it should be one that has previously <laughs> had an input into this so they understand the process. I'd like to nominate Councillor Duncan, please. I'll second that. Councillor Duncan, would you accept? Any other nominations? Put it to vote those in favour. Aye. Oh. Those against? Yeah. You got the move and signal? Yes. Thank you. Recommendation 10 um, that for the 2022 25, Train the Sport New Zealand Rural Travel Fund Assessment Committee to be comprised of His Worship the Mayor, and I need to be on that, and two councillors. I don't think I need to chair it. So I'm quite happy for a councillor to chair. So which councillors are interested? Councillor Morn, Councillor Calkin. 
That'd be a good mix. Mm. Any further nominations? So now we need to sort out who would chair. Chaired <laughs> a few meetings in my time, but I happened to, happy to let a young fella into it. Go for it. <laughs> You'd be happy to chair? I was going to move that um, Councillor Morn chair. <laughs> yeah. And you were wanting. No, no, I would, yeah, so I'd be happy to chair, but if a young fellow wanted to do it, more than happy. Right. It's actually quite easy. Right, would somebody like to formally move this, please, with the seconder? Councillor Hira and Councillor Lambert seconding. Put it to vote. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? I'm sorry, I just missed the seconder. Who was the seconder, sorry? Um, Councillor Lambert. Sure, Councillor Lambert. So we're just changing the words in the next recommendation. So the recommendation would be that council notes the direct appointment of Councillor Fee Dalgetty to the Martin Rail Hub Advisory Board and Councillor Jill Duncan to the we thought, I thought we dealt with that one. Um, what we dealt with earlier, you wish it was the alternate. Yeah. Okay. And Councillor Jill Duncan to the Otaihi Health Trust on provisions provided under 41A of the Local Government Act, which means that's my right to be able to put those positions in place. The background to this is Councillor Dalgetty has been an observer to this advisory board. Um, since its inception, and it's right and proper that she takes her place. She will be replacing uh, past councillor Nigel Belsh. It's not a role where you have lots of councillors on it. Um, there are independents that strongly sit within these boards. So that doesn't need a vote because it's a direct appointment. So it's, I don't see the need for it to be a recommendation. I was just trying to tidy it up that we might have it under that section. Yeah. So if you're happy with that, happy that is. Yeah, happy that it just sits there. Thank you. Um, last item we'll deal with before the break is the meeting schedule to 31st of December 2022. Uh, would somebody like to move that it be received and dates confirmed? With or without? Move. Yeah, but with or uh, without with, amendment? Sorry, uh, without amendment. Councillor Wilson moving. Councillor Carter seconding. Um, do you wish to speak to it? No, no you wish it, but I think it's straightforward. Any questions or speakers to it? Otherwise, I'll put it to a vote. No, put it to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Carry. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Because we're running well to time, I'll deal with this now. This is the public excluded item um, and looking for... The recommendation that the public be excluded from the following parts of the proceeds proceedings of this meeting um, and the items there uh, for discussion, etc. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with the screen. That's right. <laughs> I'm finding the resolution. Just to, want that, to go to the resolution. The, the recommend on the basis of the, the general subject matter of each matter to be considered while the public is excluded, the reason for passing this resolution in relation to each matter, etc., are listed there as such. Would somebody like to move? Councillor Carter moving, Councillor Wilson seconding. Put it to vote. Those in favour? Those against? Carrying. So there is a list of reasons as to why you're entitled to go into public excluded, and they relate to commercial interests, um, privacy matters, etc. And councillors, you have the right to challenge this. You know, if you think that something could well be discussed in 
an open council, then that's your right to challenge that. However, we have moved into public excluded and we will adjourn for coffee break and look to start again at quarter past three.